Wow. Welcome back, Tau Flater folks. Officer Greg out here with you behind the camera is Jeff. This is Tau Flater Mouse. We got a beat to settle. Jeff's not Hansel. I'm not Gretel. Today we are bringing you the Double Donut of Doom. Is this? Is that what you call it? The Double Donut? Well, that's the working name. This working Double name. Donut. We're inviting you right now, after you've, <laughs> seen, after you've seen this round, to name this down below. And I'm sure you guys will come up with a lot of cool names. Jeff has a, essentially come up with a what they call a Taurus, T-O-R-U-S. Yes. Not the Ford Taurus. This is a um, sort of a donut shape, but with square edges. We're gonna try these things and see if they tend to fly straight, fling around in the air, yeah, fly a, around like a bunch of tires. Will they, will they tumble? Will they one go faster than the yeah. other? Will one? They do look like a bunch of. They look like miniature tires. I'm sure you've seen by now, but. We're going to take a look and see how they fly. We have a variety of barrels here for you too today too. We have a smooth barrel, of course. We have a rifled choke, which is just a little bit of rifling towards the end of the barrel. And then we have a fully rifled barrel. So we're going to give them a try through all different uh, barrels and see how they perform. All right, our first target is a vegan meat target. This is a meat-free meat target <laughs> made out of vegan paper. So uh, you got what, a thousand sheets here? Yeah. Ooh. It's been soaking for two days. Yeah, so it's super wet. This thing is super heavy. It's like a concrete brick. So uh, kind of <laughs> doubt these rounds are going to make it through, but let's shoot it and take a look. I don't think they will if, if we did it right. If we did it right, though, but unless you strap it down, you have not done it right. First, we're going to go through the rifle choke. I'm going to aim at that little green dot, whatever that thing is. Brand new barrel, never been shot through before. Yeah, just aim right in the center there. Well, we had kind of mixed results with the rifle choke tube. The top slug seems to be flying with pretty decent stability, the bottom one kind of flying sideways. But neither of the slugs were spinning, which the rifle choke tube was supposed to do. So it was noteworthy that at least one of the slugs had pretty good stability without spin at all. And at 10 yards, we had about a three inch spread. Somewhere in there was that little green blob that I was shooting at, but uh, man, look at those. There's two holes. There's two big giant holes through there, and those are massive holes. Big giant holes in the front. Exited in the back. Is that all of the all of no, them? No, this is 500 sheets. Oh, okay. This is the second ream of paper, and you've got entrance hole there. Came all the way through back here at page 700, all the way through. And what looks to be two projectiles flying out the back of the very last wow. page 1000. Okay, these are a little more brutal than I expected. Actually, kind of surprised. I didn't think that was going to happen. Yeah. But this uh, entrance hole up here was is what's crazy. Yeah. Those are some gnarly holes and you can see all the way through. Okay, let's, let's see how they do out of a smooth bore next. Watermelon here, dressed up like Professor Farrington from the Interplanetary Delivery Service or something like that. So uh, we're going to shoot the next round through a complete smoothbore, 100% smoothbore, regular old shotgun, and uh, see how they fly and what it does to a watermelon. Let's go see. Smoothbore, I'm ready. All right, on the nose. Wow. Woo. It works on watermelon. Wow. And we got an impact back there on the safety firm. Yeah. In test number two, we had, in my opinion, much better results. We had about an inch and a half spread. Both slugs are flying stable, straight through the air without any spin at all. It almost looks like they were fired out of a double barrel shotgun. I doubt very many people watching this could have predicted these results. I'm absolutely impressed. Okay, ballistic Jill gummy bear with a donut hat. I yeah. Because when have you ever seen that on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why, but there's a donut on his head. Okay. Full full rifling this time. Full rifling in the face when you're ready. Uh, I'm ready. Here we go. Wow. Holy crap. In this test using full rifling, we had good engagement with the rifling this time and good spin. Not bad for prototypes, huh? You'll notice that the top slug has expanded and actually ripped apart a little bit. We were really hoping to see that on both of them. Now you may have noticed when these were shot, 
they did kind of scream through the air and I didn't expect them to do that. The gel slowed them down to subsonic speed, so therefore we heard them scream. So this is pretty cool. Look, he's still coughing up water. Um, those things flew downrange, fairly accurate. They got a little bit of separation. Jeff thinks in the slow-mo camera that one of them started to come apart, which is probably explains that tearing wound right there in his little ear area. And that thing exited back here in a nice big hole. This is something we don't normally see with the ballistic jelly. Normally a slug goes in here, closes up, it closes up right behind the slug. It exits with no hole either, but to leave a big giant gaping hole in the back like that, and then check this out, right in the mouth, got him a little whistler right there. He could put a cigarette in his mouth for the next video. <laughs> but, uh, man, to carve a big hole in there like a cookie cutter, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. I didn't know if they would separate or not. I, I, it, in my mind, it's like, okay, is one gonna tumble and the other one spin? Is Are they gonna fly just stacked on top of each other? Just Yeah, you never I had know. no idea. There you go. There it is. <laughs> yeah, you really never know what they're gonna do, but as we were discussing off camera, that probably any tiny little variance and how, because they're handmade, so they're gonna be just a slightly off. They're not they're, they're anything but precise. Right. I didn't use a lathe, like I said, hole saw, yeah, so hand filed. One of them could be slightly catching a little wind this way and one of them tumbling that way yeah, because of their imper imper But having a little bit of spread, that's kind of what you want, don't you? you? Oh, you want Otherwise, the spread. Otherwise, you might as well just use one, one solid slug. Right, you want the spread, that's for sure. It's right, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right. Next target. Like another next target. <laughs> Okay, smooth bore again. Just make sure we maybe see some consistency here. Yep. Against the non-vegan meat target. <laughs> Got Kevlar behind it, maybe it'll go through and we can catch it. Okay, uh, I'm ready when you are. Here we go. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. Wow. The second test through the smooth bore was not quite as successful. They never really left the shot cup, never really separated, but despite that, they were still pretty accurate. Wow, look at that gaping hole. I mean, it's stretched out a little bit here, but whoo, that is some massive damage. Yes, sir. And then, the wad is planted right there in the in the skin. Gas seal and, little, and wad. Yeah, you can call it a wad. There's the, can I call it a wadding? So yeah, gaping hole through there. Blasted through, there's the other ones on the back. You got nothing else inside. Clean pass through, huge damage on the on the meat. And, and then here's what we found. The uh, Kevlar vest got thrown another 10 yards back down downrange and uh, got buckled. You can see how much impact that hit with after passing through the meat. And then we shook it around and ended up coming up with a little bit of the shot cup in there. And there are your broken apart donuts. One of them looked like it hit sideways, that one. But for a soft lead projectile, that thing. Uh, yeah, one of them broke apart. That's that's what, kind of what we wanted to focus before on. Before impact or after? I think, yeah, it, it was be after impact. Okay. During impact, I should say. That's uh, probably ideal. That makes more damage. And this is a lot of damage. I don't think, let's see, this is pork butt shoulder. I don't even know what the hell that part of the cow is. Yeah. What part of the pig that pork shoulder butt is, but there was no bone through there, but man, giant gaping hole. Yep. Yeah. That one seemed to be accurate. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how many water jugs it goes through. Hey, it's Justin Bieber. Okay. Uh, full rifling? Fully rifle barrel. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm ready. All right. Here we go. Get ready, Justin. Woo! <laughs> Get ready, Justin. Woo! In the second test using full rifling, the slugs are very close together. I think I would have preferred a little more spread than that, but when they hit, the wound channel they create is still 
twice as wide as a normal singular slug. So we're essentially spreading out the energy to a, a larger area. Okay, it looked pretty accurate. Uh, pretty they accurate. they like I think they like the rifling. They did a lot of damage. This is what we found. Some shards and that was all in the vest. It went through yeah. all three jugs. This one stayed almost completely intact. This one opened up and broke into a couple pieces as it was traveling through the hydrostatic material. Pretty cool. Yeah. For the record, I'm opposed to this test. I just think this is a crime. But uh, Jeff insisted for science that we shoot the donuts with the donut rounds, the, the double donuts of doom. So they got really mad when we didn't shoot cheese with the cheese cutter around. So we got to try to make up for it. With glue or batteries with batteries or shoot up a hundred dollar thing of block of cheese or something. You know, it's like, come on. So we got two uh, rainbow sprinkles good. against a cinnamon crumble on top of a little chocolate bar. So let's see how they do. And then we'll catch it back here in the Kevlar. Okay, take your time. Oh, I will. You got one there's, shot here. There's donuts at risk. I know. Okay, uh, I'm ready whenever you are. Go. Woo! In test number three, using full rifling, very similar results that we saw on the ballistic gel gummy bear. I wasn't sure about using the donuts as a target, but it's kind of cool looking, isn't it? So far, it seems that these really do like full rifling better than the other options. So we found this guy dead center in the Kevlar vest. He had mashed himself into a one solid projectile. You really can't even tell where the hole used to be in there. This guy we found around the back, he actually had skipped around inside the carrier, still retaining its donut-like shape. Even more donut-like. Yeah, very donut-y. Kind of an old-fashioned feel. <laughs> There's the old-fashioned look right there. Yeah, that's the back side. So they both were flying straight through the air. They weren't and tumbling. Then, look at this. We opened up the old chocolate bar and somewhere along the top were all these guys sitting up here. Yep. Okay, a fan favorite from last video, Justin Beaver helping us out with the ballistic gelatin uh, test here. So um, although we have one wound track in there that you can see from the last video, we are going to try to put these donut rounds up here a little bit higher right underneath Justin's booty. Yeah, we, that's, everyone said your shot was low. It was like pretty centered. Well, the shot was centered. It dove down. Yeah, yeah. When it hit, it dove down. And it, like, didn't you see where it entered? Well, wait Come a on. second. You mean the internet uh, is going to clown on the shooter? That's just unheard of. <laughs> so I'm going to try to put the other rounds right here underneath Justin's butt and above the, above the uh, old shot so that we can see, hopefully, it's completely new wound track. Yeah. And then as a little added hey, bonus. Plus we have a high speed camera to observe what's going on inside the block. Oh yeah. And as an added bonus, you're going to get to see Justin maybe do a little bit of uh, It's a new art form. A stage show. We just, just new art form. It yeah. started out with a tennis ball and now we got. Justin uh, Beaver acrobatics. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, we're really, we really apologize folks. This is what we're reduced to is <laughs> Justin Beaver and donuts. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it comes down to. What are you they gonna do? What are you gonna came do? for the shooting and stayed for the donuts. Or something. Yeah. That's pretty much the whole reason I joined, joined law enforcement. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Good grief. Oh. Good grief. First of all, I'm not too happy with the quality of this high-speed camera setting kind of a funky resolution i was trying to get more air time for justin bieber there now let's focus just on the gel block this time you can see that both slugs enter nearly the same hole exit and one of them has been ripped apart creating a massive wound cavity what happened Greg? Well, where to begin let's start up here in the front You've got almost two perfect holes making a little figure eight right there. Kind of cool, huh? So both projectiles hitting uh, right where we thought they would, sending Justin to the moon. The camera out in the field stopped recording at that point, so let's take a look at the block of gel. The two slugs entered very close together, and that's the slug that we shot last week. Now, I was able to clean up the block of gel and also hit it with a heat gun to make it a little more clear looking. 
This clear ballistic gel is an absolute pain to work with in every respect. The top track there is from the two donut slugs. And because they more or less shared the same wound track, only one of them really was affected by hydrostatic force. Now the slug that expanded, it actually broke into a couple pieces and left a small piece behind. Now this shot was taken relatively close, about 10 feet away, so the slugs really didn't have much time to, exp to spread out. And if they did spread out, I think the results would have been even more impressive. Overall, I'm really impressed with the results. And Greg wanted me to tell you that you should go watch his video of him shooting machine guns out of a helicopter. Go check it out. Link in the description. Thanks for watching.